Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of The Grumpy Dads. With us as always is Chris. Hello mate and this week we have got another great guest. It is Charlotte Elizabeth. Hi. Hey Charlotte. Hi. Hi. How are you? Are you okay this morning? Yep, I'm all good. Thank you very much. Good, good, good. As always, we are going to kick off with icebreaker antics. I'm not looking forward to explaining this one now. Okay, <laughs> I'll try and explain the rules. I searched the web looking for products with one star reviews. They are all one star this week. I couldn't find any funny five stars. So you have got to guess the products based on the reviews I read out. Duncan is on your team. He gets one guess along with you as well. If you guess it on the first guess, where am I going? If I guess it on the first guess? First guess, one, uh, three stars. Second guess, two stars. Third Put guess, that. one star. Yeah. Put that Only in. one guess. <laughs> Per review, yeah, and you can't ask questions. <laughs> Seriously, I didn't even think I could have read that out if I'd have written it down from last week. Right, okay, we'll kick off. First review: very strong and bad smell gave us a headache. Me. Oh, it's like an insult and a compliment at the same time, there, isn't there? Oh, I definitely give people a headache. <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds a bit like Shrek. Sounds <laughs> like yeah. kind of essential oils thing. Very strong and bad smell. That's a. Uh, do you want to take that as your guess? Because it sounded like a question. Yeah, I'll take it as my guess. Okay, it's incorrect. Duncan, what's your guess? Very strong, bad smell gave me a headache. I'm going to go for one of those plug-in deodorizers. It's another good guess, but it's not correct. Second oh. review. It is most certainly not washable. The smell also is unbearable. Is it one of those scented toys that you put in the microwave to heat up? No. In fact, I bought those last week as well. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. What's your guess, Charlotte? That facial expression says it all. Yeah. <laughs> Potpourri? Potpourri. It's not, I'm afraid. Third review. The colours are nice. But get it on clothes and you'll have to throw it away. A scented paint or something like that for kids. Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to have to give it to you. It's washable kids paint. Yeah. That one with all the little pots. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a well-known brand, but I'm not going to say it. Our <laughs> <laughs> yeah. legal department who reviewed this. <laughs> yeah. yeah we, we, we don't want to badmouth them. Second product, first review. Warning others. The instructions are useless. One screw wrong and the whole thing falls apart. Ikea bookcase. <laughs> it's not, I'm afraid, no. I'm going to go for a baby swing. Baby swing. No, that would be horrific. It would. <laughs> yeah. No. Hence the warning to others. <laughs> That's quite a tame review if their baby has fallen out of a swing. <laughs> <laughs> Second review. Garbage. Even using a spacer, it is much too big. It swings, which is dangerous. These, these things are getting more and more obscure each week. <laughs> yeah, I've just realised that. I'm thinking, like, I know the answer, obviously, but... If I didn't know the answer, this would be a really, really difficult one. Although this is more, more about luck. Even using a spacer and it swings, which is dangerous. Yeah. What swings? Well, a swing, but it's not supposed to swing, I'm guessing, if it's dangerous. Hmm. That's a question. <laughs> no, it was more of a musing. There wasn't actually a question mark on that. It was a statement of That's me. Like, do I really exist? <laughs> <laughs> I think therefore I am. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go with is it like a um like a bench clamp, you know what I mean? The I do, but I know it's not correct, so I won't ask for more details. I could see Charlotte looking around her room for clear <laughs> just in case it's one floating it's around. Weird, but you would have to screw together that would potentially fall apart that then if it's swinging it's dangerous and i was like well my curtain pole keeps falling off and i was like is it the curtain is the screws in the curtain pole rasters yeah. Yeah. B, do you want to go with curtain pole yeah, i'm gonna go with curtain pole you are incorrect i'm sorry next review the bracket is good but the bolts might as well be made from plastic 
towel rail? Nope. Oh, is it a TV bracket? TV bracket. There we go. Right, we are on two stars. Two stars. Apparently, <laughs> 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 swings. Yeah, well, right. We need to say that source from shame here, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> You just got to remember, icebreaker is about breaking the ice, not about winning, because there is no league table. Remember, that's I was what lazy. losers say. <laughs> <laughs> right, final product first review. After just five minutes' use, it turns burning hot. I can't finish in five minutes. <laughs> what it's we not thinking? a Dixie one, is it? <laughs> no. Was that your guess? No. Because <laughs> I said no. <laughs> After just five minutes use, it turns burning hot. I can't finish in five minutes. A shower. No, it's not a shower. No. What can't you do in five minutes? Straighten your hair. Straighten your hair. No, it's a... That's it's a, a good, good Yeah, shower. it's a very good guess. Second review, the battery is shocking and I can feel it clamping. <laughs> is it a massager? No, I've, I've you guess that every week and we had it on oh, the like, second episode. Always lead to that kind of, that is it a neck massager? <laughs> <laughs> well, get, it gets too hot. I need more than five minutes for a good massage. Yeah. The battery is shocking and I can feel it clamping. I mean, it all fits, but it I, really I, does, I, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't think I've repeated yet. I have to give it at least 15 weeks until I get I go back on <laughs> I will, because you've only got two stars. The clamping isn't really an apt description. If I would have uh, wrote that review, I would have put, I can feel it pulling rather than clamping. Uh, is it a hair remover? <laughs> I kind of have to give it you because it does remove hair. It's hair clippers. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know how I can't give that to you. <laughs> Last review on that one is it pulls my hair. I'm. I'm going to put four stars down for that one. I think I'm going to have to also make them easier because they get really <laughs> they hard. Really obscure. <laughs> <laughs> we move on to our next part of icebreakers, which is crazy questions, random questions, completely out there. We want your opinion. If you were a ghost and could possess people, what would you make them do? Depends who it is. <laughs> people. If it was Trump, it would be concede. <laughs> I think, it, or let's say, your worst enemy, what would you make him do? Dance like a five-year-old. Dance like a five-year-old. I like what, that. Duncan, what would you In make him do? No good. Um, I would... Oh, uh, make him suddenly very generous with his charitable donations. <laughs> these are very, very nice answers. I, would, uh, I wouldn't mind being your enemies with these lovely answers, but I think what I would do is if I was possessing my worst enemy, I would strip down naked, I would jump in the car, drive down to the supermarket, and then leave the body. Because that would be the most awkward thing, that he's sitting in his car. The genius there. He's leaving the body once he's arrived. <laughs> yeah, he is in that supermarket car park, completely naked. He knows you know, that if a lorry goes out, past, get the trolley and have him actually get in there. <laughs> because otherwise, he's in the car. I'm just going to go home and try and sneak into the house. You've got to get him in a situation where he's. <laughs> now we now we get the real Duncan coming out. <laughs> well, you're gonna think more deviously. <laughs> <laughs> we just we just needed to give him that little push. That's what we want. You right. know what I do? I think of another enemy, and I get them together. So I possess the one enemy to go to the other enemy and graffiti his house or <laughs> scratch his car, then leave when he's there holding all the crap, and you've got both of them a beauty. <laughs> We'll go to our second crazy question. If animals could talk, which would be the most annoying? It'd have to be like a hamster or a gerbil, wouldn't it? You know, they're just really? talk constantly. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, not, that, 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 what's that? I was thinking Chihuahua. Yeah. Yeah. Because they bounce around, don't they? And they're a bit hyperactive. 
Charlotte, what's your? What would you think is the most annoying animal if they could talk? The Jack Russell, because they're a yappy. Oh, that's a good one. They're a yappy dog anyway. So to have them talking. Third, you know crazy. what? Cats would be annoying. Cats would be because they're so aloof. We've got bloody cats, and they just don't give a crap about anybody. I think they'd be quite isolated though. So they. I think, but I think they'd just be judgmental. The second it's it's like. The worst mother-in-law in history. They're just going to be judging everything you're doing. You know. <laughs> Let's go to our third crazy question. How do you make yourself sleep when you're having trouble drifting off? This is a family show, yeah? <laughs> yes. I mean, if you're doing something that shouldn't be said, <laughs> then I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> what about you, Charlotte? I don't normally have trouble sleeping, but if I did, I'd probably have to do it through music. So put kind of the tranquil music. That's a good one. Find some kind of like hypnotic, beachy sound, probably. Or you could listen to Duncan's Dream Easy on his PDA, Dad. (laughs) (laughs) Get comfortable. First, relax your body, starting at the top of your head. (laughs) Yeah. Link in the description. Let's uh, let's promote that one. I can't <laughs> listen to it because I know it's Duncan and he is the last person I want to hear when I want to go to sleep. <laughs> it, it feels like he's mocking me that I can't sleep. <laughs> it's so bad when they're people you know. Everyone's telling me you should do this. You've got such a soothing voice. So, well, I'll give it a go. Yeah, everyone who knows you is just like, I can't take this seriously. <laughs> Duncan, what's your, what's your technique, clean version, to get up to sleep? I have a very, very interesting book called The Wit and Wisdom of Boris Johnson. Two seconds and I'm out. Really? Oh, is that no, a real book? No. <laughs> It'd be a very short book. <laughs> Do you know how much that book would make if you did a mocking version of that? That was what I actually had. It was a, it was the wit and wisdom of Margaret Thatcher, and it was about yay thick. And you turn the page, and it's got you know the, the opening pages. And once you got past the dedication, every page was blank. <laughs> really, that's amazing. We always like to ask a few personal questions and what you're up to. First off, thanks for joining us this week. What I want to ask first is, release the butterfly. That's is that your brand? Release yeah, the butterfly. It's my is it tagline, if you like. So, over the last few months, I've been doing a lot of work on what we class in kind of the business terms, sort of my personal brand. And I've always had this connection to the butterfly. I don't know where it's come from. It's always been a kind of connection that I've had, and through the work that I do, I always say that. They go from being a shy cocoon to a butterfly and being who they who they truly are. So my whole work is getting people to to be the true person that they should be in whatever capacity that is. So at least the butterfly. That's nice. What that? You you offer all types of dance classes, kids, adults, hen parties and weddings, I saw yeah. on your website as well. How did you get into the idea? Um so when I graduated from my dance degree, I then did a teaching degree. Um, at the point of qualifying from that, the government had decided there was no value in art subjects. Um, wow. So it was like, okay, great, qualified, <laughs> uni debt, and no job. As you do, you go to Facebook to go, anyone know of any dance jobs in the area? And started out a freelance, and a lot of the contracts that I was doing was first dances, hen parties, care homes, after school clubs, kids classes, adults, kind of the whole shebang, if you like. And then after doing that for a year, I kept it up, but then decided, do you know what? I can do exactly the same. So branched out by myself and kind of it all transpired from there, really. So I've been doing it almost five years now. Really? That's wow. Amazing. Like, I, I have a friend in Australia, uh, my best man and his, and his wife, and their daughter is a dancer. And she's gone on, she's been like the head dancer in like Mamma Mia and a whole load of stuff in the Australian full version. She's really made a name for herself, which... That I remember having, it was the creepiest thing ever. I used to get a phone call occasionally from, from, from my friends saying, oh, we, we're stuck somewhere. Can you go and pick up Talia from the uh, 
from the dance class. So I'd rock up there, this single bloke <laughs> in my car sitting outside the kids dancing. Uh, yeah, feeling really awkward. But they got to know me after a while, so that wasn't like, <laughs> it yeah. wasn't as bad, but geez, it was awkward. But she was passionate about it from the start. She was, it was just everything for her. Was it the same for you growing up? Was that something yeah, that you just so, really... Yeah, I've done it, as they say, knee high to a grasshopper was when I started, so the age of four, really. That's a very um, Australian term. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the school I went to when... So I was born in Milton Keynes. The school I went to did dance classes. Um, it was part of our curriculum that once a week, even the boys kind of did the dance classes. We then moved up to the Warwickshire area, and apparently I turned around to mum and went, what about my dance classes? And she was like, oh, I didn't know you were that interested. Okay. <laughs> um, found the local dance school that was recommended, and it went from there, even to the point that when I did my dance degree, we had to pay the best part of 12 grand because my ligament had detached from the femur head. Whoa. So my first year of uni, I wasn't actually dancing because I was in that much pain because the ligament was just catching in any rotation movement within my hip. Um, that hurts just thinking about it yeah yeah it hurt doing it <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so yeah it wasn't till my second year really that I was actually doing any form of dance and obviously I was paying nine grand for that so I was paying nine grand to watch but not dancing wasn't an option so yes we had to go down the private route because it was like yeah I can come home and get it fixed but I'm not coming home and getting a job I'm getting it fixed and going back to uni yeah. um, so did it in the summer of my first year of uni Light up dance. You got a dance lesson for Sen students, haven't you? What gave you the idea to to go across to to Sen? So often we, we we get forgotten about, but for yourself, you've you kind of gave it the option there. How did you how did you form that idea? So when I did my teaching degree, I did a lot of work with the Sen students, and it was highlighted that that was the area that I excelled in more. wasn't that I wasn't any good at the other area of teaching, but kind of I was different when I taught the Sen. I was more kind of compassionate, understanding, the nurturing, if you like, for them. Um, and I'd always wanted to do something like that as I'd started my own business. And it just happened one day, as you do, you're in a Facebook group. Someone had posted saying, I'm looking for a dance class for my son and daughter. They are autistic. We've tried other, we've, we've tried other things and the teacher can't cope. The kids can't cope. It's just not for them. They need something that is sense specific. And we got talking. I said, look, if, they, if you know there's enough interest, we'll start something. So she did. She put it in the school parent Facebook group going, look, I found a dance teacher who's willing to help us start a SEND class. Who's interested started the class with 15 kids on day one wow that's amazing literally day one was 15 obviously naturally numbers dwindle gradually but yeah we started with 15 we've got about five now and literally that's just how it started the one parent asking going there's nothing in the area who can help and I went hey <laughs> and literally got started and we've tried to do more classes and the area or different circumstances it hasn't pulled off the same as this class this class just keeps just keeps going and the kids are lovely they come running in and give you a hug they don't want to go home just and just the joy you can see on their face like you look at the mum and the mum's like they haven't smiled or done anything like that in months like they have not a conversation necessarily with me but they talk to me and they're like she doesn't talk at home ne never talks at home but the minute they turn the corner and know they're almost at the hall they've got like the biggest beam on their face because they're at dance class it's their oh. it's their little thing of their way of communicating obviously they know most of the kids because they all go to the same school so they all know each other but yeah that's how it's just started a parent asked i found a venue starting yeah we started with 15. My daughter would love that. Like she loves dancing. She, she, we get the typical sort of, here's my show. And we, the trouble is everything she's learned dance from, we, we tried dance classes and we had the, the issues that she just couldn't cope with PDA and being told to stand over here and do this and do that and it just yeah. doesn't work very well. But it's, the trouble is that she's learned everything from YouTube now. So it's all bloody Beyonce videos. She's sitting there twerking and you're like, baby, girl, you just can't do that. <laughs> it's just the most awkward watch in history. I need to find something like you're doing. It would make a big difference. <laughs> Definitely. And they, they have found that structures help that as much as they need to learn to not have a structure so that when things have to change, they can cope with that change. But they've also liked having the structure of knowing that 
we start with the warm up, we go into the corner, we do some travel things across the room, we have a quick drink, then we get my flashcards out and we pick a move from the flashcards and we all do that move in a circle and then we do beanbags, we try and balance a beanbag on a body part, we chuck scarves around and get it to balance on our head, I'm like the biggest kid in the world which helps them and then we learn a dance routine and then of course we have to finish with Baby Shark. Oh, so good. <laughs> Finished on some kind right of the dance, end. action dance, and it started with Baby Shark, and then I've built other ones in, and I go, right, I'll not do Baby Shark this week. We'll try and phase that one out, and they're like, where's Baby Shark? And I'm, I just look at the parents going, I'm really sorry. <laughs> you asked for it. You asked me to put it in. I've put it in. They love it so much that we now can't take it out. <laughs> we, have to, we have to finish on Baby Shark. So. And, think, and they, um, love it. they love it. I think you should be incredibly proud of yourself for that. I, I don't know whether you realise or not, but me and Duncan, we're, we're SEM parents. I've, I've got a son and uh, Duncan has a daughter. The, the joy that it gives us when we see our kids happy, because this world is it, just not built for them. So when we come across that small beacon where they can find happiness elsewhere, whether it be in your dance class or somewhere else, it just fills us with joy. So you should be incredibly proud of yourself for, for starting something like that. Absolutely right. Um, it makes script. such a huge difference. You know, it's one of those things that you probably don't, you know, I'm guessing you hear it in some format from parents, but I think it's one of those things that gets unspoken, but it's so isolating sometimes being a parent of a sen child because people don't understand and in the end, you get sort of lumped in the too hard basket. It's easy to have the birthday party without them. It's easy to, you know, because it's just too much to cope with. I understand it, but at the same time, it's just so isolating. And when you find something that is not only embracing that send aspect, but actually celebrating it as well, it's joyous. And I love that you're doing that. And I love that you sort of, you took that and, and you've worked, you, you run with it. I think it's brilliant. I think it's something that, I don't know if it's a generation thing, but I've always been around it. So when I was at senior school, I was sat next to the Sun child and people were always like, oh, you're sat next. And yeah, he was quite high on the autistic spectrum. Like he would just take my rubber from, and it's something simple. Like, oh, he's just taking my rubber without asking. But it's like, yeah, he needs to learn to ask first, not just snatch. He had quite a temper. And it was like, how do you cope sitting next to him? I said, because he's calm sat next to me. He's not a problem. I did the SEN on my teaching. It's always something that I've always been around it and always it's just that nurturing element that seems to come out in me that, yeah, I know that I've had weeks where on like the Friday when our classes were in the day, I could have had like anything possible that could have gone wrong in a day has gone yeah. wrong. Get to that class and literally by the end of the day, I'm beaming. I come home, my partner's like, what's wrong with you? You're like a freaking Cheshire cat. And I went, because yeah. I taught my SEN kids. And it yeah. is that just delight because they just come up to you and before you know it, there's a hand on your boob or a hand on your bum and you're like, okay, fine. Like you just have to roll with it. But like you say, it's that flexibility and I get to be a kid at the same time. So as much as it's the release for them, I get to dance around like the craziest person in the world, but it brings me joy as well. And like I said, when I get parents that one of them, he sends me videos because his son's just dancing around at home or like he's still got his dance t-shirt on at like eight o'clock at night. And they That's send me a picture of that going, look at this, he won't get his t-shirt off or he's just dancing around to any old thing. Is this something you do purely like in studio or do you, do you do it by Zoom? Is it open beyond your local area or is it something that... So pre covid it was very much just in my local area it's now on zoom so i am now running send classes on zoom they're starting to pick up interaction people are going oh my god there's actually a send dance class on my like, yeah so it is starting on zoom and potentially even when i'm allowed back to face to face i will keep that zoom class because i'm starting to i've got a lady now in rochdale i'm based in worcestershire so why would I go and do something with her now? And they go, oh, sorry, I'm back to face to face. And then she loses that that thing that she's just found for her daughter. So yeah, yeah. I'm now on Zoom as well as being face to face. Could you tell us about your crowdfunder that you've got going on? Yes. So my crowdfunder is for the SEN community. I will be creating dance videos that the SEN community can access completely free of charge. 
Um, but obviously I can't create the videos free of charge. So I'm going to be doing it in a venue with the lighting, filming, editing, uploading it to YouTube, all of the marketing and things surrounding it. That's going to cost the best part of 5K to do it as kind of high end as I want to do it. The way I've set up the crowdfunder is depending on how much we do raise, we've got till the end of Feb, I will create those videos with whatever money is raised. But yeah, creating dance videos for the same community that they can access completely free of charge because I know there's so many out there pre-COVID and, and since COVID that either haven't found an activity, have tried an activity or just they haven't got the support. A lot of people that I get in my classes, they haven't actually had the official statement they know like there's no two ways about it that they are a send child but yeah. they've not had that formal diagnosis so the parents haven't got that support in place so this is kind of my way of giving back and and helping that same community is giving them some free dance videos well we'll give that a shout out and i would also say anybody who's got anything that would potentially help that aside from the crowdfunding but if there's something you can provide free of charge if you've got lighting if you've got equipment that would be helpful to make this happen let us know put it in the comments, uh, contact us. Uh, we'll put our Twitters up here. You can DM us anything. Please chuck it in and we'll make sure it gets to Charlotte. How do you approach the CERN dance classes compared to, say, your traditional dance classes? So in a way, there's not a difference. They have a similar structure of we do a warm-up technique, a creative activity, and then learn a dance routine. That happens regardless of whether it's a CERN class or a non-CERN class. The difference of the SEN classes, I'm very prop heavy and more movement based. So like I say, we use bean bags, we use scarves. Um, I've got a beach ball. We do flashcards that have got simple movements like stamping on the spot, clapping our hands, tap our head, wiggle our shoulders, wiggle our hips. That what they don't realize is the movements that we've done in that circle where they've picked out the cards, I've then pieced them together later on for their dance routine. Oh wow, it's, that's clever! It's building, yeah. it's building their memory skills. That actually, they do remember the routine. They do. It's got that. It's got that ring of Karate Kid about it, hasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's the way it all works off. Axon, axe on, axe off, hat. Axe on, axe off. That's a great <laughs> analogy. <laughs> Yeah, so they don't realise that whilst, yes, I've already choreographed the routine, some weeks I do change it and I'll have picked out combinations that if I know there's a car that they go, right, they, they pick that one every week, every time. And even though I go, right, we've done that one three times now, let's try and pick a different one. So then I hide it, <laughs> hide it so they can't use it. I then keep them into the routine. So I'd say it's that and kind of the pace. The pace is almost a bit quicker because we don't go into too, too much detail. So like in a non-send class, I'll break the routine down a million and one times until they've got it before doing it with music. Whereas with a send class, because of sometimes attention spans that where they're like, I, I can tell that I'm losing their attention, we'll move on. So kind of, I'd say, even though they're both 45 minute classes, I'd say potentially they're quicker paced to keep the, to keep the attention going so they, they don't get bored. They don't go and wander off, that kind of thing. So potentially it's just it's slightly faster paced, but essentially they're the same. Amazing. Is this something we can expect to see sort of turn up when Britain's Got Talent and stuff? I've never planned to, but you never know. Never say never. Do you have any inspirations when you were growing up? Anybody you looked up to while you were dancing? Anybody you wanted to, to be like? Or was Not it just really. the love of dance that you just loved doing it? Or yeah, did you see just, someone? Yeah, it was just the love of dance. So I've always... My parents have always taken me to the theatre and that really got me hooked. So I remember when I was four, we went down to London and we went to see the ballet version of Peter Pan. And I was hooked from the minutes the curtains opened, like on the edge of my seat. My mum was sat there waiting for the dog to bark and I was a bit like, no, nah, not happening. It's a ballet. No, you don't get any sound in a ballet. So kind of always been hooked in the theatre and the production side and everything from that. Like my brother's always been an inspiration because he's in the sport industry He's always had challenges getting work and but has always kept at it and gone and like he's he's trained a Paralympian, who got two bronze medals at Beijing. So it's kinda of like, oh wow, yeah, you you're pretty good at what you do. So yeah, it's kind of all just been the love. I think at my teacher training, my mentor really inspired me because it was her that got me into the SEN. 
She's yeah. got an SEN child herself, but her support and guidance of and kind of really show me that yeah, actually the the SEN gives me more kind of that feel good factor. Not that I don't get it with the non SEN, but kind of you get that instant gratification with the SEN class. Like I say, when when you get yeah. a child that's clinging to their mum, doesn't wanna doesn't wanna move, and then half an hour into the class, they've kind of told mum to go and sit down and go away. I'm, I'm quite happy and then they don't want to leave yeah it's quite it's quite rewarding thanks so much for joining us everyone that's all we've got for this week it has been amazing speaking to charlotte and if you have any interest in her send classes on zoom the link will be in the description likewise for the crowdfunding please do every little you know even if it's only a quid here and there every little bit's going to make a difference and especially if you've got anything you think that's going to be able to support charlotte with this endeavor that would be aside from the crowdfunding. So if you have got lighting gear or sound gear or recording gear, or if you want to use some time to help with the videoing, anything like that, our Twitters are all going to be in the description and you can DM us on there and we'll make sure it all gets to Charlotte. I want to thank, as always, Chris. Thank you, mate. And a huge thank you to our guest this week, Charlotte. Thank you very much, Charlotte. My absolute pleasure. Please do like this. Please do hit the subscribe button and the little bell and that you'll be notified whenever there's new content going up. Stay safe and we will see you guys on the next episode.